Juvent, at the beginning of the heat, I was thinking that Kai's gonna be one of your top performers this year at the Eddy, and he's living up to that expectation. Switching stance onto the inside. A little showmanship from Kai Lenny. It's to our viewers, it's not easy. Most surfers these days, you pick one way. You either surf with your left foot forward or your right, not both, but Kai here is having fun with this. Riding what we call goofy foot, going through this shore break. Oh, score that for Kai Lenny. That was a brilliant ride, some showmanship, survival on the outside. Kai Lenny, when, when the number comes in, I would suspect Kai's going to go to the top of the leaderboard. We'll make that more official as soon as we get all the, the numbers from our judges. But Kai Lenny, impressive. Yeah, incredible first round heat for Kai. He had three waves that are really good in that heat. And so. I think you're right, Kaipo. We're probably going to see him jump up to the top of that leaderboard. Kai paddling back in and is uh, going to make the interesting exit, but uh, he can hold his high, head up high because he put on quite a performance as we're catching up there to Nick Von Rupp coming in from Heat 3 in this first round. And Lenny hitting the beach. And it's time for our heat recap, Isaiah, starting with Landon McNamara. Yeah, Landon on a bomb, getting around that white water, widens his stance just to make sure that he is able to ride through that section. Beautiful water angle. Here we go on bottom turning. This was Nick Von Rupp, our surfer from Portugal. And then this is one of Kai Lenny's earlier waves. Amazing drop behind the, behind the peak. Managing those bumps really well. Oh, and here we have Jake mocking the back at the eject button while Eli Olslin goes straight. Tyo Shipman on this one. And Landon McNamara again. Landon had some great waves in this heat as well. Actually saw a lot of great waves ridden in this heat from uh, both Landon and, and Kai Lenny and, and the other competitors. This was Eli Olsen, unable to make it into that one. Oh, KK goes down. Jake Maki survives on that one. Today's television broadcast is powered by Hawaiian Telcom. Experience the speed of Hawaii's only 100% fiber internet with Phi Optics for your home or business. The Eddie Aikau Big Wave Invitational is brought to you by Hawaiian Airlines. Proud to be Hawaii's longest serving airline, offering over 120 flights a day between the islands. The KHON2 News at 7 p.m. on KHI with Bridget Namata and Gina Manjeri. Hawaii's only 7 o'clock news. Welcome back to Waimea Bay. The Eddy is on. Happy Aloha Sunday to all of you tuning in on the various platforms. Rocky Cannon here with Isaiah Walker and beautiful drone shot. Look at these lines coming in out the back, bro. I know. It's incredible. I mean, the waves have been pumping. It's been consistent. And I know that's sometimes an issue. Sometimes the waves will be big, but you mm -hmm. have these long lulls. Right. You have to wait through it. Not today. There's just ample and and very consistent surf. We're in heat number four, and that looked like blue Ezekiel Lau, potentially. We've got the lineup here for heat number four in the blue. Ezekiel Lau, obviously, uh, 
taking this opportunity to compete here, uh, even with the uh, championship tour looming just uh, a week or so away and up and riding in the white. Okay, uh, Lucas Ciampo, uh, Chianca, mm -hmm. and uh, he's Kai Lenny's tow partner and has made a name for himself surfing really big waves in, in Portugal and Jaws and a variety of different places. So. I mean, this guy's exciting. He'll be one to watch in this heat for sure. Yeah, he's one of three of our non-Hawaii competitors in this heat that have been invited. Uh, we have a Tahitian out there in the black jersey, Tikanui Smith. That's super exciting for Tahiti. Yeah, to have um, in this heat Lucas and, and Tikanui. Awesome to have our, um, some non-Hawaii competitors that have made a name for themselves by surfing big waves throughout around the world. So um, we also have a, our, our wahine in this heat, Mokani Adric from the North Shore. Yep, yep, the Adric family, uh, super well known for uh, all kinds of different water activities. Oh, Fender photo getting in the action right there the groms are frothing it's sunday they don't have to skip school to watch the eddie today they can <laughs> watch legitimate style because you know if the eddie happens on a weekday bro nothing is happening <laughs> nothing is open except the bay and everything around it oh. uh but continuing the roster another uh uh, we'll watch the replay, however. The first oh. takeoff of Ezekiel Lau steep, deep, and underneath. That was nuts, bro. Oh, look like he, let's see the water angle here. The water's moving up the face, oh. gets the airdrop, and goes down on a very big and hollow wave. Oh, bro, it's like his skateboard would hit the rock, and then he just went on the asphalt, but oh. more worse when you stay Waimea Bay, bro. Well, thankfully, Hawaiian Water Patrol is doing amazing stuff. So Zeke is there. Uh, Checking on something. Deflating his, his vest, most mm -hmm. likely. Mm -hmm. yep. So we've been uh, fortunate with the development of technology where now we have these CO2 cartridges in inserted into these vests. They're able to pull a cord and inflate themselves in order to get up from uh, you know, being held down too long underwater. There. And you know that technology has been around a while. It has. On the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> you know how they get that thing invested uh, inflated so fast the vest oh man yeah but i'm glad to see it applied in a practical sense for our surfers and along kamehameha highway right there there those folks are on the like the the median of the margin of the white line mm. those folks walking were on the road <laughs> it is parking lot status parade kind the road shut down Oh, and that's why if it was a school day, you couldn't go to school. Cause yeah, the, you got a good reason. The road blocked. People yeah. parking on the road. You know, in the mainland, they got snow days. On the North Shore, we got eddy days. <laughs> and um, rounding out uh, some of the surfers in this heat, we've got a, another non-Hawaii competitor, but big wave uh, veteran pioneer Peter Mel from California in this heat, in the red jersey. He's been competing here before and uh, has been one of the, the pioneers in this big wave surfing sport for a long time and kind of extending out to new frontiers, discovering these big wave spots that we've seen pop up over the years. So great, lots of credit to Peter Mel for being on the forefront of that. And Ke'ali'i Mamala, our Hawaiian surfer in yellow uh, from the big island and absolute charger, multi talented when it comes to wave riding disciplines and so great to see him out here in the yellow along with the north shore zone in the purple jersey see him laying on his board right there to the right of your screen jamie o'brien j-o-b is out here in the eddy and then last but surely not <laughs> least you cannot uh have a fun great surf event without involving mason ho our surfer out there in orange so Mason is going to take a crack. And there's his dad. Some Eddie action and pops. Yep. Amazing to have two mm. generations of surfers in this event. Lots of love and aloha being shared there on the beach. It's yep. another beauty about this event. You know, a lot of camaraderie. People realize that, I mean, this is big and dangerous surf. They want everybody to be safe. So even though it is a competition, it's also, uh, you know, lots of aloha and lots of help that they're um, you know, camaraderie sharing here in the lineup. Yeah, the vibe is that exactly as Michael Ho will head down the beach and get ready to be in that 
position you see the surfers in. Michael for the next. This powerful swell came from a hurricane force storm that was centered 1,000 to 1,500 miles from Hawaii late Thursday through Saturday. Winds up to 40 knots extended to an area 900 miles northwest of the islands as well. These strong winds drove peak seas to nearly 50 feet on Friday morning Hawaii time with satellites verifying that a huge swell was on the way. We're going to see pumping surf all day today, although it's going to peak from around late this morning through the afternoon. And windy conditions going to be epic throughout the day as well with offshore easterly trade winds. All right, thank you, Kevin. And uh, you saw some satellite footage of right. the clouds and, and how the storms form. And they basically look like giant hurricanes. And these are these low pressure storms that start off of a, uh, Eastern Russia as we watch a live takeoff there on the outside. Might be Jamie O'Brien in purple, maybe a darker jersey, or could have been Tika Nui Smith in black. Uh, those purple and black jerseys are going to sometimes in the shadows and in the uh, unbalanced light might look a little bit similar. Uh, but you saw that forecast and the arrow that was pointing at that fetch uh, on that satellite image. And then we saw the um, that colored uh, color coded forecast system uh, that showed a lot of energy pointing right at the majestic and very divinely situated North Shore. I like how you talk the divinely situated because actually the bay was uh, a, a place of divination. In fact, they mm. stayed the the heo up on the uh, north side of the bay on the on the cliffs there above of uh, Pupukea was actually uh, one of its purpose was for divination. They would align. It's the, actually the largest heo on Oahu. Uh, heo is like a structure, like a a temple like. It is structure. large. It's it's acres. Yeah, acres. Yeah. And it says it goes back uh, a thousand years. Wow. And uh, used for various purposes, but um, a luakini heiau is uh, that, uh, you know, a heiau could be repurposed depending on the situation and the time. Okay. But it brings that kind of mana that, that the bay has uh, on shore and in the ocean, and it definitely contributes to that kind of mystique of this place. And look at this wave here in yellow. Well, that's Kelly Imamala. So from that straight on angle, sometimes it's so hard to find the surfer as they hit the bottom of the wave or the trough of the wave from the wave before, kind of blocking view out the back. That is red. Looks like Peter Mel. He's having himself quite the day here. He is catches his second wave and he's successful at riding these. Amazing job for the condor. Yeah, he is uh, up there in the experience level with uh, a guy we saw earlier, Ross Clark Jones. A couple of the OGs getting a chance uh, here at Waimea Bay. And, you know, they've been frothing the last seven years, wondering when the next time they're going to get this chance. And it happened here on January 22nd, 2023. I mean, even though these are, um, you know, more seasoned gentlemen, They've had some of the best waves of the day so far. Right, yeah. Uh, Ross Clark Jones had that big closeout that was uh, one of the, the best scores of the day. And Peter Mel staying busy. He had one right at the beginning and cut a small little backup uh, inside wave as we watch Kelly try to hold on through that air drop, the wind getting under the board, and Peter Mel. Yeah, Pete takes a, a straight line here. Gets through that whitewash section, is able to hold on, ride through nicely. Oh, you know what? That wasn't what? Pete Mel. Oh, we forgot. That was orange. That was orange. That was none other than Mason Hope. And the pink and orange. I mean, excuse me, the uh, the red. red and orange looking a little similar there. So Mason, good call, Isaiah. Thank you very much. And all forms of enforcement down on the beach. We saw city and county lifeguards. We're seeing our Partners at HPD, City and County, Honolulu Police Department getting ready or just uh, being on standby in case any uh, wild and crazy beachgoers make a beeline for the ocean. Try to get on camera. Nah, just kidding. That won't happen. But out the back in the white jersey, that is Lucas Chianka. And Lucas. been a staple for the Brazilian big wave surf community 
And as you said before, partnering up with uh, local Maui boy Kai Lenny for some tow-in partnership. Yeah, uh, exciting to watch him, especially to do those tow-in surfing. And recently he was on that strike mission for the 100-foot wave chase out at uh, Cortez Bank. Yeah, that is such a, just a crazy, crazy place to surf. And something notable about both Lucas Chanka and Kai Lenny, their boards are are shorter than most of the other competitors. It does look that way. I would I would uh, agree with that. Right now, his board looks like he's surfing sunset, well, but he's at know, the bay. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of our riders will choose between like a nine foot and eleven foot board. Mm -hmm. Usually, about ten foot is kind of common, but. That board looked like it could be even under nine feet, possibly. Oh, Billy Kemper. So glad to see him at least being able to make it down here. He had a pretty bad wipeout. Got taken away via ambulance during the backdoor shootout of our yeah. second of our three days of competition. That was last Saturday. So we were, I mean, the Warriors, uh, the Warriors spirit here mm. is alive and well because these gentlemen did take a beating. I mean, N not only um, with uh, with with our rider here, but also with uh, McCool Kai Rothman. And even though they're injured, they're right back out into this big surf. So I'm tip my hat to them. Yeah, I mean, it's not like they're suiting up and paddling out to four foot Rocky Point. Right. <laughs> they're suiting up and putting on armor, basically, uh, to get out and uh, Maybe not necessarily do battle because we always talk about the flow and the sink that you want to have with the ocean to perform well while you're surfing. Uh, even, but we do a lot of times uh, use the analogy of, of suiting up for battle uh, when you're going out here because it is your body is just all systems go. You got to be firing on all cylinders as much as possible. Here we oh. go out the back in the blue. Zeke Yolau. That is Zeke Lau making it to the bottom emerges uh, from that huge wall of white water. And uh, I mean, it's basically like a snowboarder during an active avalanche. <laughs> <laughs> I love that comparison because uh, it's definitely chasing you down. <laughs> and trying to get in on that shoulder right there was, uh, I believe our surfer in black, Tika Nui Smith, having a look at it, but was not able to stroke into it. And just beautiful drone footage. Looks like something might be uh, out the back here, possibly. We're in heat number four. We've got five heats total with eight surfers in each heat. And we have at least one or two Wahine represented in each heat. Makani Adric the Wahine surfer from the North Shore in pink in this heat here. And we look at the replay of white. Yeah, he grabs his rail. Lucas Chanka from Brazil gets around that wave, looking whether or not he wants to stay with it. And this one, water angle, has to grab his rail, gives that excitement, shows us how steep it really is. I will say, as a fellow goofy footer, it would be awesome as we watch a replay oh. of Blue. That's Zeke just toying with it, stepping on the tail, air dropping it. He looks pretty confident out there right now. And I like it. Amazing, the water angle, you see where he skips, he has a little bunny hop and air drop down that massive wave and rides out successfully. So Zeke's had a couple of good rides too. But we have yet to see a goofy foot champion here at the Eddy. If, right. I'm, if I'm recalling correctly, all of our winners have been regular foot, and I liked the wave earlier from Landon McNamara, yep. charging on that big set. Lucas Chianka getting a couple rides here that uh, could, you know, put some scores on the board for him, or that will put some scores on the board. Jake Maki had a couple of bombs, so we'll see if right. this is the year <laughs> the goofy footer breaks through. <laughs> Oh, I remember one year Navarro was really close to the mm, goofy footer mm -hmm. to winning. Oh, we have some paddles here. Red and orange, so we're not going to mix them up this time. This is yeah. both Mason Ho and the Condor. Yeah, Mason in orange, Peter Mel, and then Tika Nui or Tahitian. Tika Nui Smith out 
on the uh, the end there. Mason doing the switch stance two times, but goes down on the second re-switch. Trying to go back to regular. So we saw Peter Mel, the deepest in the red jersey, followed by Mason Ho, close to him in the orange, and then out, up, out in front was Tikanui Smith, our Tahitian competitor in black. That was an amazing wave. It's cool to have all room for all three of them. Here we have two riders up on the same time. That's Kelly Mamala in front in the yellow. And I believe uh, either Jamie. I think that's Jamie O'Brien in the purple that is uh, behind Kelly. And we'll see if they're trying to weave their way to the shore break. Oh, almost. There's so much water that is uh, in the form of cross chops right. and backwash and sidewash and any kind wash. Although, if anybody has the skill to ride through that rough section, it'd be Jamie O'Brien. Have you seen that video? The better scores of this particular heat possibly making his name climb up the leaderboard. Yeah, we'll see what I look on the replay. We have a rider up here. This looks like that's Lucas. Lucas Hancock from Brazil. Oh, he's on a beast as well. Looks like it got some of the residual whitewash and and foam from Ezekiel's wave, but still, and those sometimes that takes a little credit away from the wave when you see all that foam. But the size of that wave, <laughs> even though it was foamy, was monstrous. Yeah. Even speaking of foam, we come up, see where he is. That's still just a thick layer of foam, and sometimes it's hard to get out of that mm. so you can take a breath. Even though the whitewash isn't near you, still the foam from the residual from the previous wave still hard, make it challenging to get through. Right, you're above the water, the surface of oh. the water. You're above the surface of the water, but you still have another foot of foam to get your head into the clear and uh, be able to take a breath. There's Ezekiel Lau getting on the back of the ski here of our water safety crew. Mahalo Hawaiian Water Patrol just doing God's work here, saving our surfers and uh, helping them out and also taking care of our photographers that are putting their lives on the line for these epic shots. And you see the river that they're negotiating down there. It's not easy operating by any stretch of the imagination. It takes so much skill, experience, and uh, courage to be able to operate in these conditions. Yeah, especially when it's foamy like that. The jet ski sometimes gets tricky it gets a little choked up if there's too much foam we i'm hoping ezekiel's okay we might be approaching the end of the heat but he's getting a ride back to shore and uh, he's gonna come back in satisfied with his first heat performance and i would say he did very well oh look at that one so steep and deep and late explodes behind him comes out of that whitewash that is a tall huge wave the drone shot coming around. Oh, look at the wave connecting across the bay. You see where Zeke is, and you see the feathering crest right there. A closeout, if you will. So, oh, different. some of the biggest waves. That's Lucas that Chianka Lucas, yeah. on the wave after. That was huge, too. And it's got the foam from Zeke's wave, but still a huge one. Then you see him straighten out here as it closes out, and that wave oh, is a so big. A lot of whitewash. <laughs> All right, so. He looks to be okay. I don't think he's back. injured. It yep. was more so a matter of that maybe they caught their four waves. Yep, and, and uh, approaching a few minutes remaining, so rather than try to paddle back out and brave the last few minutes, they uh, will take that in. All oh, the shakas and the mino akas. Everybody smiling with the shaka. All aja raja. That's what we call this one. Yeah, from that, and I coined that phrase, you guys. That's trademarked, all right? So every time you use them, I get a little of kind. Venmo, you can just send me five cents, all right? All aja raja. That's when you got, you know, from the stroller to the wheelchair. <laughs> uh, awesome, look at the camaraderie there. People are excited for all of our competitors. Zeke's getting a shout from the crowd. Definitely I'm, deserved it. That was one of the waves of the day for sure. I love how you can hear the crowd 
coming through the ambient audio of our uh, production here. Great job to all of our team and bringing it to you guys. Okay, Lee Mamala on this one. Late drop. Does make this one. Oh yeah, Kelly. Okay, Getting one that he made all the way. He was charging, you know, he had a couple of tough drops. You know, that first one was so steep and I just I don't even know how he made it to the point he made it to. And then gets a good one right there to wind down this heat number four. So finishes on a strong note, does kill Imamala. You know, each of these heats, I'm like, when it comes to the end, I'm like, wow, that was a lot of action in that heat. But it, it seems to just every heat gets more and more action. And that last exchange between between uh, Ezekiel and Lucas Chanka, those were some bombs. And we're going to show you the heat recap. That was the first wave of Zeke Lau charging from the get-go. And then Peter Mel, the condor, the experienced guy out there getting some bombs. This was another one of Zeke. This was one that he made. It, he looks so comfortable on these crazy late drops where you see the water shooting up the rail of his board and he's just cruising. Elite Mamala, this one he had a hard time getting down the face of. Mason Ho doing his thing, looking stylish. Mason had two great waves in this heat too. So did Pete Mel, so did Zeke Lau. A lot of action, Lucas Chanka, another guy who got great waves in this heat. Well, a job that I do not envy right now is our judging jobs because they are looking at so many incredibly ridden waves. Zeke just playing with it right there, stomping on the tail, pop a wheelie down the face. And he kicks out, a shared wave here with Mason, Peter Mel, and Tika Nui was just out of your frame there. And there he pops there he back is. in, a very iconic footage from the back shoulder right there. And, and that last <laughs> one of Zeke Lau, it was just the monster wave of this heat closing out on the, on the shoulder there. We'll take you guys to a commercial break. We'll be right back with heat number five of the Eddie. Stay tuned. Champ is in the blue jersey. Jamie Mitchell is out there in purple. Billy Kemper, we just saw him in yellow. In the white jersey, Luke Shepardson. And there was <laughs> Luke on a bomb. Wow. The legend, Michael Ho, 65 years old. He's out there in the orange jersey. We saw Ramon Navarro representing Chile in the red jersey. And Tyler LaRonde rounds out the eight man field out here. And here goes Tyler. He's in black. Yeah, beautiful drop coming down into that frothy section. Well, we talk, we talk a lot about the athletes, the surfers, of course, you know, they're, they're huge uh, components here, but the, un, the, the star of the show is Waimea Bay. Let's make a correction there. That's okay. purple, not black, Jamie Mitchell. That is purple, okay, gotcha. So uh, Jamie Mitchell, uh, Interesting that he is a 10-time Molokai to Oahu champ. Yeah, he's a water prone paddling. Yeah, prone paddling, and he did that um, back to back to back to back to back 10 times. Amazing. So an incredible the paddler. Kelly Slater of paddling is yeah. what I call him sometimes. <laughs> and he's, you know, he's always been a big wave rider, but in recent years, switching all his attention to big wave riding as are thousands and thousands of people switching their attention to big wave riding today on the North Shore. Yeah, that's throngs of individuals flocking to the North Shore. And uh, right at, I call that rear end corner because you gotta watch the road when you're driving right there as we watch uh, our surfer in, that looks like our surfer in black. That was Tyler LaRonde. And getting a look at blue and orange sharing a wave that was grant tweety baker in the blue and our legend michael ho in the orange and then someone just taking a beating going over the falls there as we watch yellow billy kemper he went complete on this a paced approach J billy four time jaws challenge champ Jeez, he's the man at payah he wants to be the man at waimea and uh, he's starting off well the wounded <laughs> the wounded warrior came yeah. through here 
Oh, man. Very impressive to see what Billy's been, been able to do so far in this heat just with that one wave, just even paddling out here. We talked about the injury at Pipe and just dedication, the commitment, and the it shows the how special this event is to a lot of these surfers and to all of these surfers, but especially those that are paddling out here hindered and injured and still making a go at it as we watch Jamie Mitchell free fall from the top of this wave about four or five stories high and surviving the white water. And if there's anybody that's gonna be able to paddle into these waves at Waimea Bay, it is your 10 time Molokai to Oahu prone paddling champion, Jamie Mitchell. Just seems fitting to be a great paddler and transition into a big wave surfer. Live action here, and uh, let's get an ID on that surfer. And on the paddle, and uh, there's the line of folks down on beach level in the sand, watching out for that really uh, high wash throughs and water goes over the berm into the river. We've seen folks get tumbled and rolled into the river. And uh, look for yourself uh, on the various social media platforms if you get rolled into the river. So still trying to, maybe we can get a replay from that last ride. Still trying to ID that last surfer. We have Red out there with Ramon Navarro. Ramon being a goofy foot, so that would have been him. Orange is Michael Ho. Yep, we saw him on a wave. So uh, we'll see if that last wave was Michael Ho. Pink is Paige Alms. There is a little similarity with the pink and orange uh, in the certain lighting at times. So here's our replay. Tell me who that is, Rock. Well, that is Red Grant Twiggy Baker. Oh, excuse me, that's Red... Sorry. It can't be Ramon Navarro. No, He's a goofy that was, That's Paige that, Alms. That's I'll Paige do it Alms myself. Pink. It's Paige. <laughs> I'll you gave me three, three tries at it. I appreciate it. I gave you three tries, bro. <laughs> oh, swing. Oh, swing. <laughs> Curveball. Whoa. It's all good. So too Paige high, Alms, I mean, when we look at Paige Alms, uh, a three-time winner over at Jaws. So Paige really being, um, when we look at the women in this competition, she would be the favorite to finish uh, the highest, just be given her history here, mm -hmm. 34 four years old, originally from Victoria, British Columbia, but moved to Maui years ago and took up the passion of surfing and mm -hmm. then led into a big wave riding. Paige Alms, her partner, Sean Ordinez, is also her shaper. Okay. So close connection there with the, the board making. That's a, always great to have uh, firsthand input of what kind of boards you'll be riding and what you prefer. And Paige, like you said, she has been doing this for a long time, only 34, but she started so young that we've seen her name among the top ranks of big wave surfers for the last decade or plus. Again, standing room only at Wide Mea for this Eddie and I got breaking news and uh, with this swell that we have coming right now, sometimes the heavens works with, with us. And I do want to uh, uh, pay my respect and condolences to the current family. Uh, earlier today, we lost a Waimea and big wave pioneer, Pat Curran, mm. father of Tom. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Pat's smiling down on us and giving us his mana right now. This could be, you know, in 2016, we had lost our good friend Brock Little, who was an incredible Waimea surfer. Right. Now, with the passing of Pat Curran, and 2016, we're calling that the, the Brock swell. Right. This could very well be the Pat Curran swell that we're seeing here today at Waimea. And uh, thank you so much for Pat and for all the Kerns, but especially Pat Curran as being one of a 
true pioneer. Bro, here no leash, at huge Waimeo. board, Waimeo, with all of the big heavyweights of the time as we watch another heavyweight big heavyweight <laughs> drop right there it looked like it was billy kemper again there's wow. nothing holding billy back mm, he is on fire committed and as we said earlier just how special this event is to all of our competitors but the ones that are paddling out there with uh, with injuries and with you know not a hundred percent still giving it a hundred and ten percent as we see blue and red sharing away yeah grant twiggy baker and ramon navarro twiggy right here continuing on twiggy deeper on that one grant twiggy baker a veteran of of the crew um he's out there riding his own model his twiggy surfboards right. shaped by jeff bushman right. one of the north shore uh, pine uh Staples. Staples. Staples, yeah. yeah. As far as we look at big wave equipment, Jeff Bushman has been doing it for decades. Yeah, and, and for non-Hawaii surfers traveling to Hawaii, getting their winter quivers, he's one of the first guys they call. Yeah. <laughs> How important is it, Rocky, to have, you know, a reliable big wave gun? Reliable is, uh, is the key word because... You know, you can see these waves are not all about like high performance. As we watch Billy Kemper drop in on a bomb, disappears in the uh, the fore the background of that wave before. As we watch Grant Twiggy Baker in the blue and Ramon Navarro, our two uh, non-Hawaii surfers in this heat, Grant out of South Africa, and Ramon, as Kaipo mentioned earlier, out of Chile. So cool to see them sharing a wave and uh, being able to participate in this Eddie Invitational. But reliability on a big wave gun is probably, uh, at this size, is more important than like performance or you know what you're gonna try to do on the wave. But as uh, Isaiah said earlier, these waves, uh, these boards range from like nine to 11 feet. So there's quite a, uh, a, a space there to go smaller and try to carve and maybe get it yourself into a barrel like Brock did many years ago, right off the drop. You know, that same year he had that uh, stone skipping wipeout. You know, he also had a sick barrel. Speaking of Brock, <laughs> and we have a lull right here, we do have a piece uh, with Brock Little talking about his experience um, at Waimea and that exact mm. wave you were talking about. We see the crowd right here um, just waiting for the next set, but we did get a, um, a great speaking piece to Brock Little. Let's, let's listen to it right now. The swell was west, and it was just standing up, like, straight up. And then, you know, the winds were straight offshore and hard, so you couldn't really see when you were taking off. And you just, <sighs> just had to go, and they were perfect. They were, they were from a perfect direction. You could see it coming from a long way out, and um, everyone in my heat was just, whew, like, they, they were paddling out. And I was like, ah, I'm just going to sit here. And so I just sat there and waited. And so I turned around. And I knew I was in a good spot. I knew everything was cool. Like, I got it. And uh, Bradshaw was, like, on the shoulder. And I was like, well, I'm deeper, so I'll go. And I think Bradshaw said I called him off. But I, I don't remember calling. I don't remember making any noise. Because if he, I remember thinking, actually, now that now I think about it, that if Bradshaw wants to go, he can go in front of me because it's such a big wave. It's such a cool opportunity like, to catch a close out of my man. And so then... Uh, you know, I took off knowing, you know, stood up, and I was like, I got this. It felt like there was so much water moving that my board almost started going backwards. It was such a big wave, and it was sucking up so hard that it just, my board didn't want to, and I love that board. It rolled some great waves, but it just didn't want to, you know, keep going. It just wanted to go back. It wanted to go up the face. And all of a sudden, I was skipping, and you couldn't, you can't penetrate. Like, when giant waves, you just kind of skip. And so I was just skipping, and I remember looking at the lip coming over, and I'm like, oh, boy. And then, actually, I remember, like, I had, like, a little thing of, you know, being in, being in my mom's arms, like you have that kind of flash. I was like, oh, I'm going to die here. But I got a breath. So then I, you know, got a breath over the falls, blah, 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 blah. Ate it. I think my leash came off, but my board popped up right next to me. I didn't have a leash on. It was really weird. And I don't think there was jet skis then. And I got to my board and put on my leash, went back out. And like, even the, some of the competitors were looking at me like, you know, you got to screw loose. You know, it's happy. We love you, Brock. And Brock Little uh, talking about his experience at Waimea, a good friend of ours. And uh, we love him. We miss him. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was one of those waves. That's what makes the Eddie such a mystical 
event in that things like that happen and barriers are broken. Brock Little, one of those surfers, breaking those barriers, mm -hmm. riding his Gabe Garduki surfboard back yep. then. Mm -hmm. 2016, oh, Rocky was a Brock Swell, and now we pay tribute to Pat Curran as well, a Waimea pioneer. And I think Pat up in heaven is helping us with these, this wave energy happening right now and the overall energy in the Pacific and on shore. Well, earlier you, you, you spoke about, you know, the, the heavenly alignment and what it takes to have an eddy and the way this swell has to line up and the timing, the winds, everything has to work almost to, to a perfect tee to where today we started with very large waves, huge waves. And Surfline is forecasting that we're going to get this swell still coming in and possibly increasing through the afternoon, which I remember eddy swells that had the potential, but it's going to peak at 5 p.m. Right. to 5 a.m. And it's like, oh, well, we can't surf overnight, you know, until we bust out the stadium lights, but uh, we're, we're far away from that. But the timing, as we watch this live action of, I believe, yellow out there, that is... Uh, I think it's Luke Shepardson. Oh, that's white. Excuse me. That's white Luke Shepardson. Yeah. So, Luke. Lukey boy getting up in there. Luke Shepardson, you know, he, this is an underground guy that we're watching right now. We know him in Hawaii. A lot of the world might not know about Luke Shepardson. Mm. 27 years old from the North Shore of Oahu. A couple years back, rode one of the biggest Waimea waves perhaps ever. Yeah, for sure. It's up there with the top five. I mean, that was just loony boons. Looney bins. And, and Rocky, isn't that great where we have, you know, big names in this event, like a John John Florence, but then we still have the underground, the guys who do it for love, the underground big wave riders like a Luke Shepardson. Yeah, for sure. It, it brings the complete spectrum together and the commonality, the, the, you know, the thread they all share is the love of this wave and also the love of the legacy of Eddie Aikau. That, that's a lot of the reason why these guys are here. It's so honored to be here, invited, to surf in this event. Ramon was super deep in the pit there on Surf Hawaiian Water Patrol. Has a good eye on him. Beautiful drone shot there. You see the, the lines of bubbles and just so much different colors of water out there. You've got some sand clouds that are being stirred up off the bottom. You've got uh, dark blue, light blue, and uh, some foam on the surface. A lot of uh, different contours and contrast to this day of surfing at the bay when we're watching the eddy. Here's a replay, Luke Shepardson, high line, mid face, and it kind of pulls it. Yeah, and playing with it a little bit, like you said, underground guy, does it for a lot of passion, uh, also uh, has worked as a city and county lifeguard, so watching and guarding our beaches here on the North Shore, mahalo to all of our men and women in red and yellow, and Luke, finishing up on a good wave, Ramon Navarro. Ooh. Man, he was pedal to the metal on that one. Got the nose poked in a little bit too late. Uh, maybe checking for some lobster taco down at the bottom <laughs> in between the rocks, but came up empty. Still glad he came up. You know, uh, Ramon Navarro, uh, 43 years old from Chile. He's one of the veterans. He's an OG. Know, in the, in, yeah, in the big wave scheme. Right. As, check it out. We got guys getting ready for the next heat. And it looks like Kai Lenny is going to be in heat one, round number two. I believe Kai is currently the on top of the leaderboard right now. But yeah, I'm, I'm, two really good waves. But I'm waiting for confirmation. Okay. If... Uh, and uh, information, <laughs> Rocky. In confirmation it's, on information. It's always a struggle where the cell service is a little bit troubled there at in the bay. But hey, we're, we're, we're say, I'm calling it out over the airwaves right now. Give us the leaderboard, gang. Yeah. <laughs> Who's coming with me? Who's coming with me? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well we're in heat number five right now. Third, yeah. <laughs> but this afternoon, I'm going to call, start calling people. Oh, my goodness. Wow, that was blue. Grant Twiggy Baker's done it again. Oh, he is Grant, baking some biscuits Grant under there. Twiggy Baker had a wipeout like that in 2016. It was iconic. 
it was an iconic wipeout. We have a piece that when we get a lull, we can talk to Grant about that wipeout in 2016. But it looks like it just happened to him again. Deja vu. <laughs> the Bay calls the day ja vu for Grant Twiggy <laughs> Baker. We'll make sure uh, his Twiggy model still in one piece. Man, that was horrendous. <laughs> and you know what? He said in 2016, he was surprised on the fact that he didn't get that worked. Like oh. he, he pulled his inflation, but he kind of just popped back out. He was mm. checking his body and going to water patrol and going like, I can't believe nothing's wrong. Right, yeah. Just patting himself down, checking his head. But look but, at that. Oh my gosh, off the fourth story balcony, takes the plunge. Oh my gosh, his leash was almost like a bungee cord. Like he was jumping off a bridge over a gorge. Wow, Grant. So yeah. glad to see you're up and alive, buddy. If we have a if we have a lull right here, we could hear from Grant tw Grant Baker. Uh, he had a similar wipeout in 2016, and uh, Twiggy described to us, you know, how what that feels like, how that happens. And maybe you get some penetration, you know, going from that high, but it's not guaranteed because, you know, when you get under the water you're able to get out the back. Let's hear from Grant Twiggy Baker on that 2016 wipeout. I got to my feet and I felt the momentum. I also felt this bit of kind of backwash come up and hold me for a split second in the lip. And I saw, you know, halfway down, the whole wave also turn, in, turn into the lip. I did the old cat landing and uh, luckily I penetrated. Instantaneously, it just sucked me up and over the falls, luckily, I got a breath as I was going over, just a little, you know, a little bit extra breath, and then I got, I mean, I got properly pounded, you know, sent straight to the bottom. I didn't touch the bottom, I, but I could feel its presence, and I was just getting tumbled around. As I, as I hit, um, the inflation vest went off. Everything felt fine. I came up, jet ski rescue was right there. The guy asked me, are you, you all right? And I was like, yeah. I'm okay. He picked me up, took me to the channel. I did another inspection of what was, you know, if anything was hurt and nothing. The Eddie, not only do you have historical rides, you also have Wipeouts will be in surfing's history. Grant Twiggy Baker uh, with one of those wipeouts. One of my personal heroes growing up at Haleiwa, Kerry Terakina, yeah. had one like that. Uh, I remember ago. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that makes that brings back the memories of seeing Kerry in that position. And all of us kids, you know, he was really cordial with us and always was talk story, whatever. We ask him about all of that, and kind of the same thing is like you know. I actually got, was able to get under and uh, was okay. It looked a lot worse than it really was, but you just cannot feel good <laughs> falling like that over the ledge. Like, oh my, your life starts flashing before your eyes, as they say. Yeah, true warriors out here uh, today at the Bay, which is called the day, and that's why it's the Eddie uh, going on. A couple of, of interesting dates uh, to note. Mm -hmm. uh, we did say happy birthday to Kahia Hart, who is an alternate who got into this event. Yeah. Uh, what a, a gift for a, a birthday boy for Kahia. And on this day in 1968, we lost a legend. Uh, Duke, Duke Kahanamoku, Kahanamoku correct. Uh, 55 years ago. Uh, and also, obviously, Eddie, very influenced by Duke as well. And uh, the uh, Eddie would go 20th anniversary. And the book by Stuart Coleman is uh, celebrating this year. So uh, a couple of interesting uh, coincidences in the date of today of January 22nd, 2023, running the Eddie for the 10th time in, uh, in its existence since 1984. And look yeah. at that back behind the, <laughs> the peak there. Bro. It's so nuts over there. It is, it is. Eddie Aikau. Uh, the reason that we're doing this, and that's who we're celebrating the life and legacy of the Hawaiian Waterman. But Waimea continues to perform. Tenth running of the Eddie, and we got dropping into this one. And unable to hang on, that was Tyler LaRond, the young man from Maui. 
Yeah, a name that some of you might be hearing for the first time. And uh, that's kind of a lot what we talked about earlier, what the Eddie is known for too, is highlighting these individuals that aren't household pro surfing names, but on this scale, in this category, it's a different side of surfing. Yeah, Tyler Ron, actually a second generation big wave rider. His dad, Michelle, moved over, was uh, originally from France, moved to okay. Maui, and one was one of the first, you know, kind of that pioneering crew over at Jaws at right. Piahi. Yep. Oh, look at this wave, Whoa, Rocky. This is a monster. Who do we got going? Stroking into this one. Billy. Billy Camper in the loop. Oh my gosh, I saw a splash, which I think was his wipeout, and I just got mean kind chicken skin. Oh my goodness. That was the biggest wave of the day, I think. So I think far. so. Look at this one. One more taker. Luke Shepardson wow. with a giant drop. Shepardson out running the avalanche, and he eventually gets eaten up, but Luke Shepardson doing it again. That was a closeout at the bay. Well, another wave coming into a third wave of the set. The bay is coming alive. It's what time is it right now, Hawaiian time? 11.33. The swell could possibly get bigger. I've seen one eddy canceled or not run because it was too big way back in 1998 in this month of January. I believe it was uh, in 18th or something like that. I, it was my senior year, I skipped school. That's okay. how I know that day, but yeah, yeah. it was closing out massive and too big. We're kind of right under that threshold right now, I feel like, but it's definitely contestable Eddie conditions. Billy Kemper getting the first bomb. Luke Shepardson taking off on the second wave of that set. And if it's just kind of observing a little bit, it looks like the first waves of these big sets are the gnarliest big drops. And then it kind of smooths out. And the second wave, Luke was a, it was a big wave, but the drop didn't look nearly as hairy as Billy's wave. Oh boy. And the Hawaiian Water Patrol. We got all the camera angles right now, Rocky. Yes. We got, we have a, uh, the drone angles, we have many cameras, and I also want to thank uh, the good folks over at Ohia Farms, which we have a camera in their yard over there at Waimea Bay. They're one of the people who are uh, helping us in all the ground action to bring you the coverage. Uh, so it's a great place. Uh, it's uh, right behind the church and yep. um, great views of the bay if you it's want. It's on your Malka side and, right there. And, and I believe it's available for rental as well. Yeah, so Mahalo Ohia Farms uh, when you stay over there. <laughs> and look at Billy Kemper. Wait, let's report on this. Wow. Okay, just went down. He hit his inflation. So you can see his vest fully inflated. This is a pit stop rock. Yes, total pit stop. Exactly. This is NASCAR on the beach on steroids with the assistance of our lifeguards trying to get Billy deflated. Right. Uh, but when you're at Ohia Farms, and you call your friends and they ask you, where you stay? You stay, I stay all year. <laughs> you have to work around Toby there, so. <laughs> so the swell continues. Billy Kemper just rode a Waimea closeout. Well, actually wiped oh out gosh. on a Waimea right. closeout. He's on the beach right now uh, doing a little bit of um, a pit crew action. And we got more action out in the water. Look at these waves. This right. is live, you guys. This is consistent bombing Waimea Bay. A lot for these surfers and water patrol to handle. They are handling it, but it is so treacherous. And we love it. I mean, this is what everybody waits for on the North Shore each and every season to see this event happen. And knowing what they wait for and how the conditions have to line up and be absolutely near perfect for it to happen as we saw I believe that was black Tyler Laron just bailing out right before the crashing lip came over. And one of our surfers off their board, swimming around, gonna bail the next whitewater, the beach crowd getting their front row seats, a couple of toe ticklers heading up the shoreline. Watch yourself if you're going down there. And uh, photographers in the channel as well. Lots of action in the water and lots for Hawaiian Water Patrol to keep tabs and uh, keep up with. They're doing a great job. Yeah.
Best in the biz, right, Rob? Wow, that's correct. Let's look at some replays. I believe that's Tyler Leron in the black jersey. Nice drop, beautiful looking wave. And then just kind of came unstuck at the bottom, leaning a little too much on the toes. This was Billy's bomb, where he totally airdropped Luke Shepardson on the next wave. Got in a little earlier, it seemed like that wave a little more forgiving on the drop, but just as large as Billy's wave. Luke Shepardson doing great work staying on the board for as long as he did and eventually got swallowed by gallons and gallons of Waimea white water. Tyler Laron getting another wave before he bails under the lip right there, jumps off and oh. back to the live action. Oh, the river so and movement of water there, crazy. So Rocky, so let's look at what happened. Oh man, late drop, oh. air drop, and then falls on top of the board. That's probably one of the most hazardous things you could do. Oh, Mike Hall on oh. that wave. And uh, hazardous for legends like Mike Hull to be falling on a hard fiberglass surfboard on a 20 foot wave, Hawaiian size. That is a, a sketchy equation. I hope he's okay. Heading out there in, uh, it looks like in the black jersey, that's Landon McNamara as we look forward to round number two here at the Eddy. Again, the surfers, eight surfer heats, two rounds surf. Surfers are able to catch four waves in each of those heats. And at the end of the day, their top three wave scores will lead to their total. And that's how we establish our leaderboard. And that's I believe that was, uh, Mike Cohen orange or Paige Alms in pink. It was a regular foot. Yeah, it looks like it was, uh, I think that's Paige. So we got eyes on uh, the big Water wave Patrol charger. Right uh, Adamawi and Paige is okay. Yep. Water Patrol checking on her. And she's showing some bravado. Yeah, that, that was a incredibly committed drop and We'll watch the replay of Paige and, you know, there's a point where you're like, oh, I got this. And then it's not a half a second later, you're underwater going, oh, I don't got it. And you saw how fast she got back on her board and was was okay. Thankfully, there were no waves behind that would have uh, trapped her in that little impact zone there. So she gets on the board, says to Water Patrol, I'm okay, and heads to the channel. And we saw that vision of Water Patrol giving the um, the signal that she's okay to the rest of Water Patrol. What was that? Just a tap on the head, yep, right, Rob? Just touching the head, uh, like I'm okay. Just for those of you in aquatic situations, that's how you say you're okay. And Hawaiian Water Patrol with our surfers, photographers that are actually swimming out there. That is one of the more thankless jobs, I think, in our industry of these guys and girls that swim out there and tread water and get these epic shots looking into the wave. Yeah, we had a little bit from a surf line that we played earlier of Zach mm. Noyle, who in 2016 uh, swam the whole time. Oh, there's our brother right there. Cliff Botello. <laughs> we got you. HWP and HFD's finest. He, hey, he's saving people, whether on the fire department or Hawaiian Water Patrol. Cap All angles. Captain Safety, Clifford Botello. Great to see him at the bay. Yeah, it's pretty much all hands on deck for Hawaiian Water Patrol team. They're summoning, you know, they're blowing the the ohepu and the conch shell across the <laughs> island, calling them all to converge from the east, west, south, and the north shore to uh, take part in this water safety some, endeavor. Some brothers like dusting off the dust of their PFDs, trying to find it. Wait, yeah. where's my fin? Yeah. Oh, whacking the fins together, getting the cobwebs out. Couple daddy long legs crawling out the, the, the puka in the back. <laughs> but uh, yeah, all joking aside, these guys are the best in the world. Oh my goodness! And that's where, and you know, and actually, this group of, of, of um, water patrol guys are the model in which water safety now globally mm -hmm. follows the model set by Hawaiian Water Patrol. Yeah, it's great to see Hawaiians still innovating and inventing, you know, even modern day. I mean, Hawaiians get credited with 
the sport and act of surfing and the art of surfing as well. Uh, you know, other inventions like the near shore fish ponds uh, were the first seen here in Hawaii. So continuing to innovate and invent our Hawaiians at Hawaiian Water Patrol on the front lines of water and ocean safety. And as you said, Kaipo setting the standard globally. And here's yellow. Billy Kemper back out there after a giant wipeout. Kemper again just finds his way in the scene and gets on this wave. He was on the beach like four minutes ago and already back out on another wave. He was trying to get his uh, vest deflated. And here you hear the rumble of the crowd anticipating that shore break phenomenon hurrah that's been of the eddy the last few times <laughs> billy wants the shore break this one's gonna could roll through we'll see if it like barrels at the very end but this one has so much push behind it it could just roll through and billy feeling good about that one what an effort by billy kemper yeah i mean just to be in this event and out there competing we talked about uh, how he was injured just uh, about a week ago and able to muster up the courage and uh, says mahalo to Waimea, mahalo to Eddie, a true warrior standing there embracing the moment and uh, he'll have another crack at it too. You know, he's looking down. Uh, he dedicated his performance here to his brother, to little E. Little e. Eric Diaz, mm -hmm. and uh, he knows right there, looking up at heaven, going, Eric, that's for you, man. And I, oh, this is chicken skin yeah. stuff right here. Man. Yeah, big late drop for Billy. Disappears in the background of that wave that is in front. That's how huge that second wave was and holds on. You see the drone tracking him there. Another disappearing act with the wave in front, pumping, hopping, trying to get this shore break. It seems like the shore break sand hasn't lined up yeah. just as nicely as it would uh, to provide those long extended barrel closeouts that we're, uh, we've are we seen in the past here. We've seen a couple of riders come into the shore break like this, but it's kind of breaking on top of itself with doubles up, double ups and triple ups as Bailey claims that one to shore rightfully so. So maybe later in the day as the sand moves around, mm -hmm. we could see more opportunity for those grand finales of the closeout barrel because I feel like it's like the the luggage today with you don't make lug luggage without wheels anymore right it's hard to win the eddy without getting a shore break bomb that's right <laughs> and you know what that goes back to 2004 where Bruce Irons took a win here at the eddy and he was really the guy that established riding it all the way into the shore break correct and then ever since then that bar has been set the four rides here, but it's a dangerous bar. That's probably some of the most <laughs> dangerous part is the shore break. Right. Here we go. Um, up and riding. That's right. Ramon. Yep. Navarro. The Chilean. Sound the horn. So this is going to be the last wave. Well, it'll be maybe of the heat, but these guys aren't going to yeah. stop surfing <laughs> as uh, the waves keep coming in. They're in the spot. You know, whether or not they can even hear the horn sometimes. Yeah. When you're way out there in this offshore wind and, and kind of side whipping around, it's sometimes in the bay, a little bit uh, of an anomaly of where the wind's going to come from. It has its own little microclimate in Waimea Valley and in the bay. So depending on what... So casual, Isaiah. He does, and you look, he was deeper than everyone. He was inside of everyone, too. Late drop, but just made it look so smooth and easy. He had a bottom turn on that one that uh, many of our competitors today, you don't really see them taking that line because it's just about survival. But on that last one, John John managed to like bottom turn up the face and ride out over to the shoulder. I got my three P's of surfing, Isaiah, and it's right, and it's relevant in any kind of surfing, but especially in big wave surfing, it's place. paddle, pick, and then perform. John John did all three of those. He paddled for that wave. He put himself into position so he could pick that wave. And then he performed just with such a solid stance and great line selection there. Yeah, John John Florence, of course, two-time world champ, uh, the defending champ of this event that happened seven years ago here at Waimea Bay. And he's right back in, in, in the great form. Look at this wave. Beautiful drop wave barrels out behind him he's able to come around that white water 
Great one for John John Florence. Another angle here from behind the section here. You can see him dropping down, a little bit of a chatter on the bottom. Stands so tall and casual, makes it look so easy, and kicks out. Actually, we are commemorating, commemorating of course, Eddie Aikau at this event. And people would say that there was something to like Eddie Aikau when he caught the waves, he also had that ability to make it look easy and able to take off deep and behind the wave and uh, really make him, you know, make it look easy. And that's that's one of the things that our, our athletes are, um, uh, you know, that makes an athlete stand out is their ability to make something really challenging look pretty doable. And so these guys make it look really easy. Getting an update now on our leaderboard. We have Kai Lenny out in first. Second right now, Billy Kemper on the current leaderboard. Ezekiel Lau in third. Landon McNamara in fourth. And Luke Shepardson rounding out the top five. That's our current leaderboard as we keep you updated. And uh, shake the coconut trees for the coconut wireless. Ask a couple of minor birds for their information. And we finally get that stuff to us. And uh, we relay it on to, to you folks watching. Thank you for joining us either on Surfline or locally on K High. And uh, it has been an incredible day. We're only halfway through the day and bring you updated here at the Eddy. And it looks like some people, no better way to watch it. Well, you know what? You get the replays if you watch it here. There you go. But in person, you get to smell and feel the mana of the ocean in Waimea Bay. Yeah, there's something we were talking earlier, Kaipo, about the mana of Waimea, the valley and the bay. It goes back over a thousand years to, uh, it, it was run by Kuhi, Ka, Kahuna Nui, which are like these high priests. And the bay has that kind of aura of mystique, of, uh, of mana, this kind of spiritual energy. You have three heiau that are in Waimea and one of the largest pu'o mahuka, which is up above uh, Pupukea, the largest heiau, or uh, kind of like a temple-like structure of, of old Hawaiian culture that uh, is there at the top there. They say that that heiau had this mystical ability to, uh, the, the chief of the priest that was residing there would communicate with the island of Kauai to the nearby heiau on, the, on that island, whether it was through lighting of fires or through other kind of supernatural means. Uh, this heiau has a lot of mana to it, and so does the beach here and the ocean, and we're feeling it all today as the audience is down there uh, able to testify that the ocean has a lot of mana or is it, energy. Is it true through that heiau and those communications through the kahuna is how Kamehameha got the news that, hey, uh, is it Kahikili who was on, on Kauai, the, the, the king at that time when, when uh, Kamuali'i Kamuali well, Kamuali was on, Ka on Kauai and, and, and he said, oh, cool, man, you know, we're going to join you guys. And so we didn't have that, that, that conquering of Kauai. You, can, you, right. you, you, you read all the books. Well, I'm well, just going <laughs> to go by legend right now. Yeah, well, the, uh, the, I think the kind of cool, too, is Heva Heva was the name of his high priest, of Kamehameha's high priest, that would make these calls. They would sometimes say, you know, the, they would read, you know, the elements uh, and and interpret, you know, what the signs or the uh, the whole Ilona are saying, and and these these advisors would say, hey, don't go into battle at this time, go in the middle of the day, or don't go to battle here, and and so yeah, so that was the job of the priest and Heva Heva, who by the way is the ancestor or kupuna of the Aikau family, so really interesting that communication, that connection. Uh, but yeah, certainly the, the, you're right, Kamehameha chose not to uh, go to war against uh, Kauai and they instead made a, a treaty with each other um, without war or bloodshed, yeah. And then Kamuali'i and the folks at Kauai joined the rest of us gang over here and uniting under one Hawaiian kingdom under Kamehameha, is this correct? Correct, yeah. And so one of the final battles uh, took place on this island here that we're looking at, Oahu, and over toward the east side where we had this uh, battle at Nu'uanu. Oh, that was a brutal one, wasn't it? Right. So when Kamehameha brought his men up the shores uh, in Honolulu, pushing uh, the, the o Oahu warriors to the edge of literally the cliff on the precipice at Nu'uanu today, called the Pali Lookout. And that's where hundreds of warriors fell to their death. Right. Kind of cool, Jason Momoa is actually playing, there, there's an Apple TV series coming up where they're telling this story of these battles. Um, and one of the chiefs that actually Jason Momoa is playing is is Kayana, and Kayana is the, one of the 
chiefly figures that originally is with Kamehameha in his uh, in his on his army, but then they have a kind of a falling out, and in the end, it climaxes at this battle of Nuuanu. So it's going to be a really epic series. Yeah, I was, great I, story. I, I was hoping for Jason Momoa to to ring me up as like a role as a warrior, but I guess I didn't make the the warrior cut <laughs> in that upcoming film. But I'll be watching it. But uh, yeah, but, uh, awesome. <laughs> All right, so getting you caught back up in the action here. This is Heat One, round number two. It's been pumping all day. We've been listening to Surfline, our official forecaster for the Eddy. They told us that this swell would peak right during kind of midday into the afternoon. And we started off with big Waimea, but now, Isaiah, we're seeing huge Waimea. We're seeing some near closeout sets. I know, those ones uh, Luke Shepherdson had. And Billy Kemper in that last heat, those were maxing out. So it's exciting for us to watch. I'm sure very nerve-wracking for our contestants. Another set coming through here. And competitors are competitors positioning themselves. We got a paddle here. And, oh. All I can say is, wow, that was a, a, a big, steep drop to be had, and it looked like we had two surfers paddling for that one. Eli Olsen and John John Florence, some old friends, scratching into this one. John John says he wants it. Eli right in front of him. And the two friends are going to share a wave at the bay. That is just poetry in surfing Waimea. Eli Olsen, John John Florence, again, making it look easy. Oh, so fun to watch that and make, again, um, having these two friends are almost like brothers sharing a wave together at Waimea. Very steep late drop. That's what makes it exciting. The fact that John John was able to make that being deeper in the peak uh, shows that probably um, the value will go a little bit more to because he was in the more critical part of the wave. But man, some big waves today. There's a famous image of Eddie Aikau that really put him on the map. This was in 1967 or 68 where he's taking off on a wave similar to some of these big closeout waves. There's John John Florence and Eli Olsen. Love these guys. And, uh, you know, they got, they got their out there. They're, um, John John on his, I'm sure it's a Paisel Padlack. He's, you know, guy who's stuck with his shaper since whatever, 10 years of age. Oh, one more look at this, Isaiah. Yeah, I can see how drops in deep way under the <laughs> sea level and the two right there's a water angle look at how late he is turns at the board right as he's dropping in so he doesn't get thrown over the falls beautiful wave you know i noticed he's riding a, a red board which is i don't know if it's an homage to eddie because eddie was known for his red board and catching these massive waves in the uh, 60s and 70s. I used to talk to some big wave riders who I'm just fortunate to have in my life and in family and some uncles and Kimo Hollinger who was a North Shore pioneer oh, yeah. Hawaiian big wave rider. He told me he always liked the colored boards especially red boards and stuff because a lot of those guys didn't have leashes back then so you could see a red board in this foamy white water like this far easier than you could see a white board so the red board had like a also had function. almost a function to it yeah. by having the color on the board so you can find it you know in a sea of white and can you imagine i mean today we're we're blessed with um we have the water ski the jet ski the leash test time for maki all right one of the young guys from uh the nearby here on the north shore graduated from kahuku high school Jake's one of those kids too that you know the the, the continuation of big wave riders born and bred on the North Shore mm -hmm. is just this place. You know we have people who who spend their entire life trying to get here and they train here and they come here every year, but the homegrown talent. Imagine someone like a young Jake who's just this has been his backyard for as long as he's known. Right, right. There's a replay of this one, and that is. Jake's wave did a great job of re-emerging out of that incredible bombing wave that blew up right behind him right here boom disappears re-emerges does the Houdini act and that'll be a great wave for his score line 
This is where we have the two riders up, both of them up, and both of them disappear. Yeah, so that looked like it was Aaron Gold behind um, uh, Kyle, Kyle Lenny. Kyle Lenny. Remember, Kyle Lenny's on top of the leaderboard right now, so a lot of things can change. We've seen that in every, uh, you know, we've seen that in every Eddie. We can look back just to, you know, 2009 with the, one of the last waves of the event. Greg Long took that leaderboard off of the hands of Kelly Slater. Kelly wanted to make it two. Kelly Slater winning in 2002. He was leading in that final heat in 2009 when Greg Long caught that bomb at Waimea, changed the scene, and put his name on notice to the big wave community and really you know, started the career of Greg Long with that 2009 Eddie win. Yeah, that was amazing. Well, we're going to have to go to a commercial right now to thank our sponsors, and we appreciate all of our sponsors. We'll be right back with the conclusion of Heat One, round number two, here at the Eddie Big Wave Invitational. seconds so it's a pretty uh, large range of uh, wave periods so when you say shifty what do you mean by that um, just when uh, these different wave periods um, interact with each other you can get a peak that starts moving a bit and I think you can see some of the that on the biggest waves here well um, do you have somebody a favorite that you're rooting for today in this event uh, there it's just great to watch everybody I don't have a favorite all right, well, uh, Justin, a professor from the University of Hawaii at Manoa, uh, got his PhD from there in Manoa as well. And thank you for joining us. Appreciate your time and being here with us in the booth. Yeah, thank you. Aloha. Aloha. Well, as you can see, our lineup is taking a little bit of a break and our competitors are sitting in the lineup waiting for the right place to be. As we heard uh, our professor Stopa explain that sometimes the, with this interval uh, swell, he had quite the year where he made it to the finals in the Duke Invitational competition, was known for surfing one of the biggest days at the Bay and getting the best shot of that day. And then that, at the end of that year, he got the call to be the first lifeguard at Waimea Bay at this beach. Yeah. Um, and so in that one year really was like a big uh, big year for him. And and since then, and, and, and then for the next remainder of those few years, he continued surfing in competition. And, uh, and the bay became sort of his spot, especially as he was posted up here as the lifeguard, the first lifeguard as well uh, at Waimea Bay because it was such a dangerous and treacherous place to be. Uh, that they wanted their most trusting um, individuals to be there, and he did his job incredibly. They said under his watch, not one person lost their life. Yeah, incredible, and the celebration of the life and legacy of Eddie Aikau. And you talk about treacherous Waimea, and uh, we're seeing some of Waimea's treachery right now as this set rolls through. We saw that first wave of the set. No one able to paddle into that one. Offshore winds, another big, big wave raises to the horizon big oh, drop here lining this one up and it looks like hi lenny getting exploded there on the bottom if i'm correct he uh we lost him in the trough for a second from our vision here we go big drop there for blue aaron gold and both surfers unable to withstand the mountain of white water that has encompassed them, but a, a great effort by both of those surfers. Yeah, Kai Lenny, as you mentioned earlier uh, in round one, he was the top of our leaderboard and he's still staying big, busy and active. And as you said earlier, um, in 2009, when when um, when Kelly Slater was in the lead throughout most of the day, you, you, and it's not over until all the heats are done. So um, so Kai's still got some work to do to keep on. There we go. Here's this angle of, from the drone. Kai Lenny making that drop comes around that 
explodes behind him. He actually does reappear, and afterwards where he loses his footing and his balance, there's a water angle of it. Look at the size of that wave. Right here, it explodes right behind him and still rides through that section. So I think that hopefully will be a keeper for him and put it into his queue. Thank you for all of our production staff here. Now it was, it was, hey, um, I just want to say something for all this coverage as everyone who, who can't make it down to the beach like these thousands of people. For those of you who are enjoying this on Surfline as well as K-High, I want to thank uh, Eddie He and Sean uh, Keeley, uh, Justin Aguilar, uh, Ryder Yamamoto, Dave Yamagata, and uh, Steven Tercino, some of the crew there at K2, uh, K KHON2 and K High uh, for all of their efforts that they've put in here and um, Hawaiian Telecom for their support as well. Thank you to the entire crew, uh, Christina and the crew over there at KHON2 um, for making all this possible. Isaiah, this was a fire drill, if you will. We don't have, you know, a lot of, a, a lot of, uh, planning that we're able to do. We hear the swells coming, there's speculation. You don't know if it's gonna go. And then within the last, I wanna say, 36 to 48 hours, everyone's had to scramble together to make this show possible. Yeah, and so mahalo, big mahalo to everybody and their teams that are getting this. And it's, and it's the, you know, the, the ocean, right? It, it's, you never know exactly what it's gonna turn out to. We had uh, Dr. Stopo explaining that they, we didn't know until last night Riders, that was a bomb. I'm thinking that was Eli Olson and Jake Maki on that wave. Here we go, one more. Giant oh. drop and couldn't make it to the bottom. Looked like Aaron Gold on that one. My goodness, we'll get that in the replay to get a closer up, but that was action. More sets coming, lining up across the bay. This one. Looks like it's going to take out the entire lineup and likely connect to the left across the bay. Hawaiian Water Patrol surveying the destruction on the inside, and it looks like um, that was white. E Eli Olsen saying he's okay. Yep. Flying above here, you can see the repositioning. And what a scoop right now, getting Eli on the back of that ski. And out of the way. May have broken a leash. We'll see if he's still got his board with him. Got the board. Nope. No, that's just the uh, ski escaping. And with that throttle right there, that could be Keone Keolana, one of the fastest ski drivers in the world. He likes the throttle. Look at this big wave. <laughs> It's amazing, Waimea Bay, one thing that really distinguishes this wave and the way that it breaks is, there's part of it, where it, right where the lip hits, usually a wave will, will explode and then kind of shoot up and a little bit out, but that last one that we saw, it shot out like 50 feet to the front, and when you're riding a wave and like you got a, what seems like a fire hose shooting you from behind, it's very hard to maintain your stance and posture. Look at this drill right now by Hawaiian Water Patrol. They're gonna to have to zigzag inside of the surf line right now because there's no way, it looked like the channel, um, if uh, the channel has been taken out. So you can see these guys zigzagging here, checking on the competitors. Looks like that's gonna be blue, Aaron Gold. He's gonna get on the sled and oh. trying to do the pickup and just missing them. So keeping a watchful eye, Hawaiian Water Patrol. Eli Olsen, you can see him too. They've been taking quite a few waves um, with the rest of the set, Isaiah. Yeah. We call that in surfing getting caught inside where you're unable to avoid the wave and there's nothing you can do but just take it on the head. And oftentimes here, of course, why maybe we see this, you ditch your board, go under it. This is close to shore, so explosion on the shore break. So also, this, that means these surfers have had to take numerous waves on the head and have been pushed near the shore break after basically getting exploded after the takeoff. K-2 
Okay, so uh, let's check this out. Let's check what, what the decision time is. And that's just uh, that coming in. He's okay. All right, good sign. That's Landon McNamara. <laughs> Making it to breath. shore, yeah. Well, we took five or six monstrous waves on the head, and of course, you have to hold your breath each time. It looks like he also took his, his leash off. Look at this replay here. John John Florence. This is a heat recap. Yeah, that was John John Florence and Jake Maki on that giant wave going all the way across the bay. Check this one out. Beautiful one. This looks like Greg Long. Yeah, Greg Long with a nice drop, staying in control there. One more view, this time, of Landon McNamara on the backhand. How he got behind that boil and that whitewash just engulfed him. John John Florence making it look easy, air dropping in through this huge wave. John John had a really good heat in this round. He got a couple of keeper scores, so I think that'll really help him on the leaderboard. Here comes Jake, grabbing rail off the takeoff. And trying to outrun that explosion does so. Oh, and this was Landon again. He caught a couple of really good rides in this wave, in this heat, excuse me. Made it around that one. We also saw him on that last heat, that last set. Oh, and this is from way deep. Kai Lenny. Yeah, our current leader, Kai Lenny, looking to add upon his score. And look at this drop. And <laughs> the result of the impact there. Massive explosion. Oh, Aaron Gold. Took we'll be back right after these messages. Exploring big waves for us was...